Today we're visiting the ancient temple dedicated to Dionysus um, at the location called Iria here in Naxos. And here's a beautiful new uh, olive grove. You can tell the age of olives by the trunks, of course. Uh, over here, we've got some vineyards, some vines, which is fitting because of the fact that this temple uh, that we're gonna be visiting was uh, dedicated to the god of wine, Dionysus or Bacchus in uh, Latin. There's not much left of the uh, temple, which is here. And a lot of people don't even really bother to visit it just because it's, uh, you know, there, there are just a few remains. But for me, it's important uh, because this temple and this area, in fact, Naxos, is the birthplace uh, one of the, let's say, birthplaces, uh, because it was all throughout the area known as Ionia, the birthplace of the Ionic uh, column. So here in uh, the late, sorry, the early 6th century uh, BC, this temple was constructed um, according to this uh, new, for that time, architectural order, the Ionic. Here there's a reconstructed column and you can see the capital of the column, the Ionic column. So the temple was dedicated to the god of wine, Dionysus, who from a much earlier time than the time of this temple uh, was worshipped on the island. Dionysus is linked to the island because in antiquity, um, Naxos, was famous for its wine production. They produced very high quality wine and that was shipped around Greece or the Greek world and around the Mediterranean. And so people believed that because there was such good wine here on the island that Dionysus surely must live on the island and in the, the forests of the island. So he was believed to, to, live, to have lived here. There's a, a legend, the legend of uh, Theseus slaying the Minotaur in uh, Knossos in Crete. And uh, on, when he left, when Theseus left uh, Crete on his way back to Athens, he made a stop in Naxos. Um, if you remember, Theseus had taken, or rather she had gone with him willingly, um, the king, uh, King Minos' daughter, Ariadne, with him from Knossos. So Theseus and Ariadne, left Knossos and headed back to Athens, making a stop on the island of Naxos. Well, when Theseus and a ship left again, they left Ariadne here. And there are different sort of versions of the, of the story. One says that Ariadne was left here on purpose. And the other was that Dionysus, uh, that uh, Theseus forgot her. In any case, Ariadne was left here on the island and the god Dionysus who lived on the island, as they say, as legend goes, saw her and fell in love with her. Uh, at first, Ariadne didn't want the god, uh, but then she succumbed and they ended up getting married and living on the island of Naxos. So that's sort of another legend in which Dionysus and uh, the island of Naxos feature. Here's the reconstructed Ionic capital. This uh, temple was really sort of a prototype of Ionic architecture because it was uh, one of the very first Ionic temples. You can just see the base here, just a couple of um, bits of the column shaft there. I don't see any capitals lying around uh, or bases of the columns, but uh, very kind of um, old uh, example of this Ionic architecture. Something I find interesting as well is if you look at the column here, this remnant of a column, this one is monolithic. What that means is that it's made of one piece of stone, which is, uh, is interesting because then later, just uh, maybe a hundred years later, in the classical period, column uh, shafts were not monolithic anymore. They were made out of drums or pieces. But here, this is such an old temple. This predates the uh, Parthenon by more than 100 years, um, For just to give you uh, an example uh, for reference. So these, it looks like these, um, these column shafts were all monolithic rather than in drums. So just some interesting uh, bits 
of information about this temple, which has uh, long been destroyed. It was in um, it was destroyed around the second century AD because of a flood. There's a river that uh, that uh, flows nearby, and they say that it was only in the in the 1980s that the site was discovered, and what are today all around it are potato fields. Um, and how did they discover it? Well, there's a Byzantine church, so about, um, about, about a thousand year old church dedicated to St. George, just uh, you know, two potato fields over from here. And they say that uh, they realized that some of the marbles inside that church that were used for the construction of that church uh, came from an earlier, more ancient temple. And so they, um, they realized that there must be something in the area and they started digging and they found uh, the bases here and uh, the rest of the finds of this uh, sanctuary dedicated to the god Dionysus or Bacchus in uh, Latin. Uh, the ancient well of the site. It's from the 6th century BC as well. The site was um, was walled, or there was a there was a, um, a, a low wall all around the site. You can see sort of beyond the temple. There's a pink colored wall. That was that was where the original uh, wall was. And the entrance to the site in ancient times was down this way. And uh, right beyond where these trees are today was the um, port of ancient Naxos. Today, the, um, uh, the land has sort of taken over and uh, the sea, the, the coastline has been pushed back, but right beyond this area here would have been the port. People would have arrived this way through, from the port, coming through the area here that was the Propylea. Propylea means uh, before sort of the gate. It was in the, the monumental entrance of any uh, temple site. So there's a Propylea in Athens, for example, um, when you enter the area of the Acropolis on the top of the hill uh, to visit the Parthenon and the other structures up there, you go through the Propylea. So uh, this is what this area would have been here. So for visitors arriving, they'd go through this gate and then the temple was uh, in front of them here. All of the, uh, the plants the trees that have been planted here have been planted very much on purpose. The, um, the olive grove that was when we first walked in, that's beyond these trees, and the uh, grapevines, because they found inscriptions sort of describing what the area around the temple looked like. And so in modern times, after this temple was discovered in the 1980s and excavated up until 1995, uh, the excavations took place, um, they decided to plant um, flora that uh, was the same as it had been in ancient times. So very, very interesting. Here's a sketch of what this temple, the 6th century BC temple, the, the Ionic temple would have looked like. And this is an interesting exhibit here. They've got plexiglass uh, slides that show all of the different temples that have been on this site. There were four temples. This one of the 6th century BC, the, the remains of which we see beyond uh, us here, uh, was, the, was the last temple. But there was one, an early archaic temple, as you can see here from the 7th century BC. Then there was one from the 8th century BC. So going back in time and even from the very early 8th century BC. So you can see what was here in this spot. This, so this spot from the most early times um, of antiquity was a, a place of worship uh, and um, of pilgrimage for uh, the god Dionysus, and even earlier uh, than just the 8th century BC.